Uh, thank, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I want to thank Senator Booker and Senator Lee for their great work on this. Uh, I was a public defender in, uh, in Vermont. And so many of my clients uh, had mental health issues. Uh, some were homeless. Uh, and it was as though, uh, I mean, you've heard this before, but in frustration uh, in our inability to uh, address issues of mental health, uh, a lot of those folks ended up in the prison system and then uh, had a hard time getting out. Uh, I'll ask uh, uh, all of you, what do we do about that? I think the First Step Act has been incredibly helpful in acknowledging that there's some folks who really are good to be getting back out on the street. Uh, but uh, talk to me about how we can uh, have the criminal justice system not be the mental health system of last resort. I'll, I'll start with uh, the, our prosecutor here. Thank you, Senator. Uh, we implemented in Frederick County a mental health court about three years ago. I think the uh, specialty courts are critically important because you take a look at a, a segment of the population, the offending population, and again, you try to figure out why are they offending. That It's crime fighting. What people don't realize is they, they feel like mental health courts sort of soft on crime type of stuff, but it truly is crime fighting. You're preventing these people from reoffending and therefore preventing crime from, from reoccurring. So I do believe that mental health courts where you get uh, people who are not lawyers, but are mental health providers and clinicians in the process so that they can determine what's best for, for, for this person. And again, once again, be strategic in terms of the offender and preventing further uh, offense. Uh, well, thank you. You know, the one thing that's so frustrating about that is that if a person has like an addiction problem, that is tough for them to address and it's not as though a lecture is going to do it and they're going to lapse and relapse. Uh, but we still seem in this country, much more than any other countries, to rely on the prison system to be the place and the criminal justice system to be the place where we somehow, quote, address those issues. Uh, I, I'll ask Mr. Charles your thoughts on that uh, since you have some incredible experience of being on the losing side of that. Uh, I, mean, I agree with Mr. Smith. There needs to be more mental health courts. And can you, you put your microphone a little closer? I can't quite okay. hear you. <laughs> Thank you. I said I agree with Mr. Smith. There needs to be more mental health courts. And we do know that addiction and mental health are sometimes play hand in hand. And oftentimes because what we call the justice system is punitive in nature, it doesn't distinguish between a person that has an addiction or mental illness, all it sees is the crime that they actually committed. Okay, and you. I can, I've been in prison for 22 years, and I can clearly say that no mental health treatment behind bars is sufficient for some of these people that have addictions and mental okay. illness problems. So I think that, of course, uh, I believe that people should be held accountable for the crimes they commit, but they need to receive treatment along with the sentence or treatment as opposed to the sentence, and that's it. Thank because you. behind bars, they only get worse, not better. Yeah, and that gets us back to uh, Senator Booker's concern about the staffing in order to be able to provide treatment or vocational training uh, that we addressed. Mr. Smith, I want to thank you for the good work you did uh, in your previous position in the last administration. Uh, one of the things that happened during the pandemic, as you know, is that there was a significant increase in the use of home confinement. Mm -hmm. That's become very controversial. Uh, and to some extent, it's controversial because there is uh, understandable apprehension as to whether certain offenders uh, can be trusted and the public can be safe. To some extent, it's a view uh, that people want more punitive action than, quote, home confinement. Uh, but my understanding is that home confinement, by and large, was quite successful. Um, what's your, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think you may be alluding to the CARES Act, uh, which That's allowed right. a number of federal uh, um, individuals to be uh, spend time at home confinement. And it has been uh, very successful. Um, uh, former Attorney General Barr said, um, great criteria um, of who qualify for that home confinement and um, the recidivism rate um, for those individuals um, is less than 1%. Um, it's extremely low. Um, and uh, we've saved a lot of money um, in the for the federal prisons on um, which we can use those dollars to invest um, in the current infrastructure and uh, implementation 
of the first step back. And so I think we should certainly continue down that road. Um, and I also want to mention on the, on the mental health piece, you know, I'm working with an organization called Care Sullis. Um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a critical thing as a country that we need to invest into mental health infrastructure that is a crime prevention piece because a lot of people who end up in the prison system is because of um, trauma um, backgrounds and, and lack of mental health and drug abuse and uh, our ability to kind of set up that infrastructure is critically important. Um, so working with local mayors to do that Great. would be helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman.